There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined for a third time with my good friend, Dr. Amy Horneman, also known as the thyroid fixer. And now she's like a massive influencer blowing up globally all over the world. Amy, what's going on? How are you? Hey, Jay, I love hanging out with you. So I'm totally cool. This is the third time that we're riffing and hanging out. I love it. I love you and you are amazing. And uh, we do go way, way back. And uh, it's funny because you and I hadn't talked in a while, but obviously I'm seeing you blow up and you know I'm blowing up in the background mm -hmm. too. And we, we got mutually connected from a, a, a potential, uh, you know, a partner, a business partner or venture partner or something like that. And we just, that person was talking about you and I sent them a screenshot of like you and I, and they were like, no way. And it was just, you know, it's a small world in the biohacking space, but just really quick, why don't you just give everybody, before we jump into the topics is we're going to make this surgical today, just give us everybody a, a quick update on what's going on in your life. Cause I know you're into so many different things now. So many different things. So still, you know, crusading the the war on sick medicine with how they treat <laughs> how they treat my ladies with thyroid and hormone conditions. You know, they're still T4 only for the thyroid, leaving everybody fat, frustrated, and tired. And then they're telling women that hormones will cause cancer. So, you know, always battling that whole debacle and in, in sick medicine. And then there's the the fixer supplement brand that we just keep launching new products. And I know we're going to talk about a couple of them, but they're just making such a huge difference in people's lives, specifically in this war against obesity that, oh my God, you know, millions of Americans are battling right now. So yeah, that's, that's what's on the plate. Well, so, uh, and as I told you, so she sent me two of her products, um, the T2 and then the powder, which is, uh, what is it? Thyroid fixer? Is that what the powder is called? So the, the capsule is thyroid fixer that just contains T2 and like L-tyrosine and then metabolism fixer. Metabolism does, fixer. Yeah. Yeah. That bad boy contains T2. So that increases your basic metabolic rate, but it also contains suppressa, which suppresses the appetite. So it's kind of working like a low level GLP. That's awesome. Okay. So let me just tell everybody and yeah, we will get to the end of this and her and I are going to riff. I'm using the product. My wife's using the product. It works so well that I told her that I don't know, Amy. It's to start everybody's sleep, which again for me is uh, an l tyrosine thing because I'm like sensitive to it. But it it is amazing. There's no question it's enhancing thermogenesis and metabolism. So congrats and, and kudos to you and your formulator and whoever is behind the manufacturing of your product. It's great. And I also wanted to say, which is no BS because I taste them all all the time because just like you, people are sending me stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. I can get some shit that I don't even have to get rid of. It tastes really good. Like the flavor that you sent me just in water, I was like, oh shit. Like this is really, really good. Like I haven't actually had in a powder supplement because as you know, again, there's so many pre-workouts. There's so many hydrate supplements now. I mean, it seems like everybody is bringing stuff out and it's hard to get a really non-bitter or non-chemical or non-acidic, or even let's just call it supplement vitamin taste. And somehow you guys did it. So congratulations again. It's definitely awesome. Oh, thanks. We had a lot of taste testing and it was important to me to, like you said, not have all the garbage, like no right. artificial right. sweeteners, nothing like that. So it had to taste good and not be loaded with chemicals. It's amazing. Okay. So we're going to jump uh, yep. all over the place. So the first one is the terzapatite apocalypse. So obviously, you know, as well as I do that Lily's, uh, who, by the way, are the attorneys for the manufacturer of the pharmaceutical prepared variant, the patented, you know, big pharma patent version of terzapatide went after everybody who is selling uh, generics, both compound pharmacies, research companies, which both of us are involved with, 
What are your thoughts on that? Where do you see the big picture going with this? I mean, it, does it really matter? I mean, obviously it matters to just appetite users right now, but do you think it's really just chump change over because of what's coming in the pipeline? You know, I guess we, to back up, we should have seen this coming. It was one of those things that we all know how big pharma acts and we shouldn't be surprised that it's happening, but I, I think it's happening sooner than you and I anticipated. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And you know, the, the shame of it all is, is that the prescription version, we know that there are parameters that you have to meet in order to even qualify for the prescription or you're paying out of pocket and you're paying a boatload of money every month for that oh, yeah. prescription. You know, and then we do have the compounding pharmacies, which thank God they're not touched yet. But you know, that, that yet, but yeah. you know, we would be we would be ignorant to think that they're not going to be. You know, I mean, if we stick our head in the sand and say, "Well, the compounding pharmacies are fine," no, that's stupid. And, you know, I, I don't even know if this is answering your question, but overall, it just pisses me off because you're removing a tool yeah. from a much needed arsenal. We have an epidemic of obesity. Yes. Some of it is our lifestyle and things that people can change and that is on them. And, and some of it is genetic. It is thyroid. It's hormones. It's exposure to toxins that maybe people just don't grasp or affecting their endocrine system. And terzepatide is a tool to decrease inflammation, to help them with this weight, to reset their, their thoughts around food. My best friend is using it and she needed it. It didn't matter how much I intervened with her and, and talked about diet, talked about lifestyle and working out. She needed this tool to just adjust how she looks at food, adjust how she eats every day, and it's changing her life. So to remove this all for money is just preposterous. I'm, I'm pissed. I mean, and you should be. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because, yes, we knew. We didn't think as fast. We didn't think it would be covering research as well as compounders. But from what I've been told, and again, you know, there's a lot of hearsay and a lot of rumor and innuendo, but from what I've been told, uh, compounders are done too. Like if you're manufacturing terzapatide and it's not Manjaro, uh, you can't manufacture it anymore. They're going to sue the dickens out of you. So I would say that in the next three to four months, it mm -hmm. really will be the terzapatide apocalypse uh, because they're going after everyone. They lost in state court, I think in Vermont and Rhode Island in April. And as you know, Lily is a probably hundred billion dollar pharmaceutical giant, you know, the real quote unquote uh, Illuminati that control this planet. And they said, oh no, we're not. We paid a lot of money to have the patent on this and we're going to enforce it. And we have a legal right to do so. So my guess is, Aim, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. You know, the 503B people will say, oh no, we have a right and we have a license to, to continue to compound this product, you know, in industrial sized dosages. And of course, Lily's attorneys will be like, oh no, you don't because you're yeah. not compounding Manjaro. You know, yeah. and, it, and look, you know how the game is played. We all do. I mean, you know, from the compounders to the research, they just changed the uh, chemical formulation by a slight bit. Mm -hmm. But the issue now is, the issue now is, is Lily knows that that's what's happening. So they're basically saying, we're applying this to the actual pharmaceutical usage of the product, which as you said, is a tool against obesity. Obviously it's a tool better than that, right? We know it changes brainwaves. It helps people who have addictions. People that have alcoholism are saying, I don't want to drink anymore. So yeah. it does all these amazing things. But they're going to enforce it. I mean, we don't know how it's going to be enforced, but Amy, I will definitely tell you, I have friends in the compounding pharmacy that basically said, well, then I'll go out of business because I've spent so much money on, you know, my whole large operating capital and margins are based in me being able to sell, sell terzapatide at industrial size levels, you know, to all of the quote unquote physicians like you out there who are prescribing this to their patients. So it's going to be an interesting second half of the year. I mean, obviously we know it's coming up in November. So it's, this is going to be 2024 is must see internet, right? Like the next yeah. five and a half to six months, I think I, I see a lot of shifting and changing in the world. Oh my gosh, definitely. Well, let me ask you this. Is there an adequate alternative? Because you've talked about, I can't well, say the name of it, Retortide or what? Retortide, yes. Yeah. So is that comparable? Is that going to be good enough for people to, to use and get the same results or not so much? So it's a great question. So I'm actually talking to my private group tonight. So Hunter, 
uh, Williams, who's obviously my business associate and the guy I've been mentoring for a long time. We've been experimenting with terzapatide and retitrutide. Now, you know, for the record, as you know, retitrutide is not clinically available because it hasn't passed, you know, quote unquote, uh, third stage trials. But by the way, Eli Lilly owns the patent for that product too. Oh, so crap. It's only a matter of time before they enforce it. But I will tell you this. I, I used retitrutide last year after when it came available in the, in the research community through Limitless, it was available, I want to say, in like the end of September. So I used it the end of September, early October. I wasn't dieting. Uh, I was not living as clean. I had just moved back from Mexico to Florida and I was like going through massive stress, you know, buying a house and acquiring matrix trappings and all that stuff. So my life was like, you know, I was living on an air mattress for at least two weeks in my, in my new house. And um, it was just not the perfect timing for me. I didn't have anything dialed in supplemental wise, um, but I noticed that it increased my metabolism so much that I was actually hungry, right? So leaner people on terzapatide as a triple stage agonist increases met metabolism so much that you're like, oh my God. So my thoughts were, you got to use terzapatide with retitrutide if you're a lean person. But now a year later, we just started microdosing it um, you know, in, in very, very low increments together. Right. And, and, mm -hmm. and for people that know me, my strategy is, you know, in my courses, in my books is on my fasting days. Sometimes I'll take it at night before my fasting day starts. If I remember, you know, right before I go to bed, because I know the long half-life of the products, but I've just been fasting, taking it in the early, early morning when I wake up on my fasting days. And I will tell you, it's amazing. So okay. my guess is if it can replace terzapatide I'm not noticing um, as much of an appetite stimulation as I did last year. So I want to kind of attribute it to just my life wasn't as clean. You know, I wasn't eating as healthy as I normally eat. But so my, my caveat is, is if you're living insulin control, you're following Dr. Amy Horneman and Jay Campbell's recommendations and you use uh, retitrutide in place of terzapatide, I think you'll get as good a result. Again, if not better, because it does have the third stage, whereas terzapatide is the dual stage. So my concern was always that it just revved up metabolism so much that you were hungry, but mm -hmm. I'm not noticing that as much now when I'm using a microdose. And obviously I should have caveated that last year when I started using it, I was using the higher dose of 2.5 to 3 milligrams. Whereas now I'm only taking like 0.5 to 0.6 twice a week, you know? Okay. So you'll, but you'll definitely, I mean, I'm so lean right now. I want to like rip off my shirt on this because <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> Of 53 of being this lean, but, um, but in truth, like it definitely, definitely curbs appetite. It definitely enhances metabolism. Um, you will eat less, but then you can also, and again, I'm not encouraging this, but you can get away with more. Mm -hmm. And again, because of that triple stage where it's enhancing metabolic rate, there have been a couple of times, you know what? I just thought of this. So maybe what I told you off air, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the red of true time because oh. it works so well. And maybe it's that and it's not your product because I haven't taken your product after two o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe that's what it is. That's amping you up. Well, I was also going to say, I don't know if you noticed this, but when, when my patients get their metabolism up and running, they, they'll ask me a lot, like my sleep is off. I'm hot. I'm like, yeah, that's your metabolism yes. actually yep. working. So yes. I'm wondering if you just <sighs> don't have your, your revving super high right now. And that might be keeping you awake. It's probably both. It's probably yeah. both. And like I said, and again, you know, shout out to your product. I mean, it definitely works. Like my, both my wife and I started using your product as soon as we got it. Like the day that you said it, it was like a week ago. Yeah. And we've been using it literally every day. I've taken two capsules twice a day and um, I've been using the powder when I've been home. We went away for 4th of July weekend, so I didn't take it with me. Yeah. But I've used the powder like three days too. And like I said, it tastes amazing. Um, but I just definitely noticed increased energy. And again, I'm, you know, my daughter just filmed me and Monica doing the Regenerburn videos and we're both ripped, you know? And so it's like, you don't realize that you look at yourself on video and you're like, Jesus. Yeah. You know? So like, I mean, I know it's working. And so you're probably right. It's probably a combination of just everything I'm doing. And of course, when you're using microdoses of GLP-1s, you don't eat as much, right? right? Like, I don't right. care how muscular, how big, you know, how lean you are. You're just not going to put, you'll push away. The best way to say it is like a guy like me could easily eat a cowboy ribeye grass fed, you know, a 24 ounce bone in. I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. right? Like I'll literally eat like probably two thirds of it and then be like, oh, we'll take it home to the dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
So, yeah. I mean, like that's that's kind of what it does. But I mean, again, as you know, I mean, the longer you're going to live longer if you eat less, right? You have less free oxy radicals, you know, less uh, uh, oxidative waste. So, I mean, over time, it's just it's 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 enhancing, you know, the senescent cell removal. That's really what it's doing because you're just not eating as much. Right. And, but, but my rule for the ladies, especially if they're listening to this on my podcast, because we're going to air this online. For sure. You eat protein like it's your job. I don't yes. care if you're not yes. hungry. Drink yes. a shake. Do a 40 gram protein shake. I don't care. You know, but yes. you have to get that in no matter what. I want to talk about that. So I'm glad you brought that up. So my wife literally, this is so crazy how the timing is on this. So my wife took her first shot of a GLP this okay. morning. She heard me talking to her brother-in-law. I mean, her sister-in-law, because her sister-in-law, her brother's wife, who was here with us in 4th of July weekend, we were at Clearwater Beach and she was just asking me so many questions. Mm -hmm. And it was just like nonstop, you know, and I'm like, you know, people pay me for this. But anyway, I was just giving her information. And so she was listening really intently. Now, again, my, you know, my wife and, and she's very lean naturally, but she was like, if it really does, you know, help with the food noise or help with like clearing thoughts and stuff like that. And, you know, gets rid of some of like ADHD or whatever, you know, people think they have because of technology, you know, just spreading us thin. And mm -hmm. she's like, I want to try it. So I was like, all right, well, let me give you the red true time. You know, I'll, I'll give you just a microdose of that versus the terzapatide. Cause she was asking me about terzapatide. Cause as you know, so few people know anything about red true time. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's just not clinically available other than in the research world. So anyway, I gave her a little shot this morning, but I said to her, if you notice that you don't want to eat, you know, you have to eat protein. And Amy, we talked about this on the first two times that you and I did podcasts together. What is it? 90% of women are protein malnourished, right? Oh. I mean, they just don't eat yeah. enough protein. And then they lie, right? Because they compensate because they have the psychological, you know, this phobia that if they eat too much protein, they're A, going to get big muscles or B, fat or both sometimes, right? right? So it's like, no, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have to break them out of that 1980s, 1990s calorie counting mode. And yes. they're yes. counting their calories. And there was one woman I met with, it was just last week. We told it up, totaled up her protein and she was getting in 60 grams. And I said, it's okay. Unreal you realize that your, your heart and all the major organs need about, and I have saw this in a study a long time ago, but approximately 50 grams just yeah. to beat your heart and, and maintain your organs. Yeah. So you're yeah. giving your body 10 grams to grow your hair, to make your skin pretty, to protect your muscles against sarcopenia as you age, that's not enough. So don't yeah. complain to me that you're losing your hair and losing your muscle and you feel weak and you're gaining fat when you're not only getting in 60 grams of protein. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, let's talk about that because I want to get into your newest, um, you know, what you recommend for women to optimize their hormones. Because as you know, it's all over the board. I mean, obviously you and I talk to people about this all the time. I, you know, hair loss and GLPs. I mean, we just talked about the answer, but let's spell it out for people. I mean, when a woman and a man, by the way, but it, usually it's women that complain of this, they go on a GLP and they get hair loss. It's cause what you just said, they're not eating enough protein. Right. It's literally that. I mean, it's it, nothing else. Yeah. There's cofactors and vitamins and, you know, uh, electrolytes and all these other things that they're not getting, but it's, they stop eating protein. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, protein is at the very, very top. So whenever we talk about hair loss, of course, we want to look at the thyroid. We want to look at your testosterone levels. We want to yes. look at, you know, your hormone profile, even low estrogen can cause hair loss, but yes. If you're not eating enough protein, that is the number one thing you have to change now if you want hair growth in three months from now. 100%. So, so tell me then right now, like, what is your preferred hormonal optimization protocol for, and I know all women are unique and variable and stuff like that, but for like a, you know, let's say a 40 year old woman, and I know you're dealing with women that are in their late twenties that are now like chemically castrated and just all sorts of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Like you said, low estrogen, uh, no testosterone. I mean, yep. it's just, it's, it's so insane, but like, what do you have a preferred, uh, delivery system for testosterone or estradiol or progesterone? I mean, I mean, I mean, I know there's so much out there now, but like, can you, can you kind of share like your preferred pro, pro uh, protocols again, knowing that yeah. everybody's different. Everybody's different. Right. Exactly. Well, even before I dive into that, I want to address something because I've been hearing a lot more lately. I don't know if you've heard this as well. 
but in listening to podcasts and, and there's a ton of menopause books coming out now. It seems oh, yeah. like everybody and their sister has a menopause book. And I'm hearing some of these women, whether they're doctors or just practitioners talking, and they're saying, well, do all women need to go on hormones? No, you can just do the lifestyle changes and you can sleep more and love oh, yourself. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I have not seen a study yet where, where sleeping more and loving on yourself has increased the testosterone level from a 20 to an 80 or brought up an estradiol number from a, from a three, which I often see in perimenopause and menopause to above a 50, where we get the brain, bone, breast, and heart protection. You need hormones. You need hormones. Now I get it that not all women respond to hormones the same way, but that's why we have the different delivery methods. So now I'll answer your question. So delivery methods. Uh, for estradiol, I'm fine with injection, patch, cream, progesterone, oral, or cream, depending on, on how you tolerate it and what dose we want to get you to. Yeah. Do you have anxiety? Do you have sleeplessness? All right, let's try the oral because that has a greater calming effect on the brain. Testosterone, I prefer injectable. I hate pellets. And the creams are a crapshoot. The creams sometimes work and sometimes doesn't, depending on the woman. But you have to use the bioidentical hormones to replace the hormones that are no longer being made. That's the bottom line. Beautiful. So the creams for women, do you like, is perivaginal, uh, clitoral head, you know, inner thighs? Like, because I know for a fact that with men, transcrotal is by far the best cream application for dudes, right? Because again, yeah. the skin at the bottom of the scrotum, uh, the peritoneum is so thin and very, very, very easily absorbed there. It's again, it's, you know, there's literally peer review. There's like nine or 10 studies of it that show it's eight times more permeable than any other skin place. But isn't it kind of the same for women as far as in their sexual areas, again, perivaginally or clitoral head for cream application? I mean, do you find that some women can absorb just as well there as they can like on inner thighs? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. The only thing with applying it to the clitoral head is you don't want to get a clitina. So if you right. see exponential, <laughs> exponential growth in that area, then maybe, I mean, if, if it's, if it's helping you to increase sensation, increase blood flow to the area, right. absolutely right. still use like one click of your testosterone apply to the clitoral area. And then the rest put on your inner thighs. You know, I, I would just spread it out that way. Now, estradiol cream is also beautiful applied transvaginally because that increases, well, it helps to increase lubrication. So while we can increase the estradiol number with a patch, a cream or injectable, and with the cream applied, we'll say inner forearms, you know, upper part of the body, when you apply it transvaginally for those women that are really suffering with vaginal dryness and vaginal atrophy, it can absolutely help. So I love this. I'm switching over now to uh, clippable stuff because, so, you know, I do half and half so that, that my team can clip both of me. And they, they, they like when I have attractive people, they're like, we need more talking heads, Jay. So you're, you fit the bill. Hey. Well, thanks. But, okay. um, I love what you just said. So, and I got to go back to unpack it, you know, because I always have to play comedian. But I mean, I truthfully think, I mean, that's the weirdest thing about women is like some women have naturally bigger clitoris regions, skin yep. folds, areas, totally naturally. And then some women don't even have one, yep. you know, like when you see them, you know, anatomically. So, you know, I don't think a bigger, little bit more robust clitoral, you know, head is bad, right? Because no. if it's going to increase sensitivity and that's what people don't talk about is the clitoral region is the man's penis with less testosterone in utero, right? Yep. So there's no difference. So like, I kind of am like, if, like you said, you already said it, you nailed it, but I'm kind of like, if a woman likes that yeah. and she gets more sensation sexually, you know, uh, masturbation, sexual, whatever, both, maybe hopefully it's both, mm -hmm. um, then there's nothing wrong with that. But obviously, yes, you can't have a, pe you know, a, a woman doesn't want to have a penis there. I, I love right. that. What did you call it? A called penis? A clitinus. A clitinus. A clitinus. That's awesome. But no, my health coach and I talk about this all the time because we laugh, like we're like, women are either in or innies or outies. It's like a belly or out. and your innies or outies. And when you're an Audi, there is increased sensation a hundred percent. So the men listening to this, don't be freaked out by a little clitinus because right. you are going to please her way easier than with the innie. Do you think by the way, cause I've never even thought of this, but you, I mean, you just, wow, you just blew my mind. I mean, there are women that have innies less likely to 
achieve orgasm? That's a great question. I don't know. I, you know, I, that, that'd be one for like Susan Bratton. See if there's any studies. Yeah, there. Susan, I'll, I, text right? her. <laughs> we'll, I'll text her. her right now. We'll ask her. But yeah, I, I'm wondering that. I mean, I can imagine there is a difference. There has to be. There has to be. Yeah, because again, the sensitivity and stuff like that there, that, that is very fascinating, but that's interesting because I've never thought about that. But you're right. Like, it's just genetic. Yeah. By the way, do you think that is something to do with uh, just a lack of exposure to testosterone in utero? So some people have more and some people have less. And so the women that had more have a, more of an outer appearing one. Yeah. And I would even say, you know, genetically. So look at yeah. mom and dad. Are they... Yeah. Are they beasts like you and Monica or are <laughs> they like, do they look like a vegan, right? <laughs> or, are they <laughs> vegan? <laughs> or they might I be. Mean, we always have to pick on vegans. Well, I mean, it's so bizarre, right? Because my daughters are 16 and 14 and truthfully, I've never seen it, right? I mean, I've seen them when they were babies, but they're now both mature adults who are menstruating and stuff. And I've never actually looked at it, but it would be interesting to see, you know, what they do look like. And look, you know, we can carry this out. This could be an entire show, but I mean, you and I both know that the whole trans sexual misidentification or confusion or whatever the hell all this nonsense is, right. is all biologically explained. Because again, Dr. Anthony J talks about this. There's many people now talking about this by a lack of testosterone in utero. Yeah. Why yeah. are all the men so weak and so emasculated and looking like women by the time they're 14 or 15 years old, right? Where they have like the estrogenization of their body types. It's all Amy due to lack of testosterone in utero. And again, it's all explained through the biochemical onslaught of shitty food, you know, shitty air, yep. plastics in the water, endocrine disruptors everywhere, you know, perfumes in the water supply, birth control in the water supply. I mean, you can't go anywhere without getting hit with some form of endocrine disruption. No, you can't. You can't. So- yeah, we have the the lower testosterone in utero, which I have had many patients trying to get pregnant on test levels of a, a nine and a ten. So we have to, and then they they're they're concerned about. It. They're like, "Do I want to use testosterone if I'm trying to get pregnant?" I say, "Yes," because yes. whether you have a boy or a girl in there, you want adequate levels of testosterone. You need testosterone to get pregnant for fertility. Everybody focuses on progesterone, and they should, but we also need to focus on all the other hormones like testosterone. And then once you're pregnant, okay, we either drop that dose way down, eliminate it altogether until after the pregnancy, but you need, you need to get enough in you in order to have a successful pregnancy. Do you think right now, because we didn't talk about this and we can, and you know, this is in my course and this was like new to me from talking to really some of the biggest high level uh, GLP doctors out there. Uh, we both know the birth rate is way down. You, you have thousands probably of female clients and probably dudes too, who cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fertility, we're at the, it's the lowest birth rate ever. Fertility is an all time low. Is it partially, cause again, people don't like to talk about this. Is it partially Amy because obesity is so high and BMI oh is so high. And so we have all these men and women who are fat. Yep. Let's just be honest. They're fat, skinny fat, as you know, is just as bad as obese. Right. You know, if your body composition is 30% or more fat, you're obese. That's, those are statistical facts. So it's like you could be a skinny person mm -hmm. with no testosterone as a man, even as a woman, no testosterone or like, you know, modified estrogen. So you're kind of like hyper-masculated. I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's crazy where we are, but do you think that's really what it is? Yeah, we know the endocrine disruptors are everywhere and the environment's contaminated, but do you think it's just literally too high a BMI and just too much obesity and insulin resistance that's preventing people from getting pregnant? Well, I think that's a huge component because we are seeing, and I think you and yeah. I talked about this last week, increased fertility with the use of the GLPs. Yes. So that directly correlates to lowered insulin and a reduction of body fat increasing yeah. fertility in individuals. So hundred percent. I mean, yes, we have, we have all the other factors of fertility. We have thyroid, we have progesterone, we have all the hormonal balance, we have the endocrine disruptors, but yeah, if you're walking around obese, your chances are significantly decreased in having a successful pregnancy. Nobody talks about that because again, you know, we all see the videos and the memes of like what beaches look like 40 years ago, Yeah, you know? Yeah, you saw you would see two or three fat people in a field of a thousand. And Amy, I know you know this, and I'm not preaching to the choir here. 
People like us now, when we go to a pool or a beach and we take our clothes off, people look at us now like we're the obese people. Mm -hmm. It's the most insane world. Everything has inverted. If you are in shape and you take care of yourself, you are a complete outsider. And, and slash outlier. I mean, it is insane the level of what I call flaming dumpster fires that are now, you know, I mean, it's basically ubiquitous. I mean, you can't go anywhere in public and not see people that you're thinking like, dude, like, how did you let yourself or lady, how could you look like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the 1%. So I don't know. Did you ever read Doug Brackman's book, Driven? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we've had this conversation with Doug. He, I believe he touts that 10% of the population is driven. We're like, no, Doug, it's more like one to five. It's one to five because just go anywhere, go to the mall, go to Walmart. It's insane. Places. Go anywhere and go to a restaurant and sit and just look around you. We play that. My husband and I play this game all the time. Let's count the fit people. Okay. None. Here we are at a baseball None. game. Um, no, none. There's one way down there. Maybe. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, if I really wanted to put my tinfoil hat on, we could say, I guess the reptilians won the battle now because they've culled the population into just people that can't defend themselves. They can't move. I mean, let's face it. The average person can't walk up three flights of stairs. You, you want to see a joke. You, you go, you know, the airports, right? When the escalators break and the people can't go up or down on the escalator. Right. And it's like, Oh, what am I going to do? And you watch these people. I mean, some of them call for wheelchairs. That's another thing. Like every airport in the United States now mm -hmm. has massive wheelchair stand through the, through the entire facility or through the entire airport because most people can't walk. Yeah. But, I mean, dude, it is, I mean, don't even get me going, but yeah, I mean, it is the most bizarre. I, I wanted to get your opinion too on food, right? Mm -hmm. So like when we go out to nice restaurants now, steak restaurants primarily or seafood restaurants primarily, do you realize that people are so, again, obese, insulin resistant, their taste buds don't work. They've decimated themselves. Again, flaming dumpster fires. Mm -hmm. If you, Amy, don't tell the people preparing your food not to put shit on a beautiful, you know, ribeye or a filet or, you know, scallops or, you know, uh, wild caught uh, sea bass or salmon or something like that, dude, you can't even eat it. Yeah. They put so much shit on top of the meat now. Yeah. That you're like, what is this? I mean, I've, the last two times I've gone to Ruth Chris Steakhouse, one in Miami, one in Atlanta, I forgot to tell them, hey, I just want you to cook my grass fed ribeye with butter, butter or olive oil. Or anything but the shit that you put on top of the food. Dude, I'm not kidding you. It is atrocious. These high-level five-star restaurants now putting stuff on the food. Is it because their average dumpster fire person can't taste it without the bullshit on top of it? I would say yes, absolutely. So the, the hyper-palatability of food now yes. is through the roof. I mean, unless it is highly salted, highly sugared, or artificial sweetened, People aren't tasting it. They're not liking it. So in order to get people coming back, which, I mean, again, you guys are the 1% that walk into that restaurant. Yes. What about the other 99%? They got to please them and get them coming back. And in order to do that, you have to put a chemical on the food to trigger their brain and to light right. up that part of the brain that, that lights up with cocaine, trigger that, that part of the brain to go, oh my God, this is amazing. We're going to keep coming back. Here's my money. Dude, it's, it's mind blowing because if you don't say that to them in a militant fashion to your server, your preparer, whatever, you know, I know you know about it. If you don't, I'm going to blow your mind, but have you seen the no seed oil app yet? Do you, are you familiar with that app? No. Yeah, I'll send it to you. So okay. there's a new app wherever you go, you can get updates where you can actually go to restaurants that don't destroy you. Nine. So it's brand new. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's like two okay. months. I, somebody showed it to me too. It was when I was at A4M in May. I was like, no way. Right? So it's cool, right? Because now you actually can go to restaurants that won't kill you. But dude, it's insane when you have this map and you can go into a Tampa or a Miami or a Kansas City or you know a major city and see how poisoning contaminated the food is.
Yeah, because you have like two restaurant choices. Well, that's important for us because we travel so much too. Yes, yes. I mean, whoever yep. built this app is a genius. I mean, I hope they make all the money in the world because they're doing society a favor. But dude, it is incredible now. If you do not, I mean, I, I made the mistake on Saturday night. We went to this awesome steakhouse right on the wharf or right outside of the wharf in Clearwater. And I ordered a badass 16 inch Wagyu ribeye and paid $140 for it. And I had to send it back. I'm like, look, if I'm paying $140 for this, I want you to cook it without putting a bunch of contaminants on. Yeah. And they were literally like, Mr. Campbell, I'm so sorry. This is how we prepare the food, but we'll, we'll make you another one, you know? So it's like, in my mind, it registers. It's exactly what you said. Hyper palatability. People can't even taste the food, Amy. Right. Right. Exactly. That's the problem. I mean, I, I, I don't even understand how whack our society is where people literally can't eat a succulent ribeye mm -hmm. and not taste it. I mean, it's laden with fat. It's the choicest, most visceral laden fat deposit and people still can't even eat that clean anymore. It's insane. It is insane. And really all we can do is exactly what you're doing or what we're doing is educate, educate. And those who want to listen will hear it. And those who don't, want to hear it won't They'll i mean when you out. travel when you and your husband travel now do you guys like try to like bring food or prepare food or just go to a specific place and get salads because i know it's so hard to eat it is hard you know luckily all the places that i've traveled to lately i mean including europe including london there's always been a really good local locally sourced farm yeah. raised you know you if you target those establishments, you're pretty safe. But I am going to start using that app because sometimes you're just stuck. You're like, okay, we have an hour before the next, you know, speaker comes on. Let's go get some food and you just go right. wherever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I want to talk to you about a little bit bioregulators and peptides and just mm -hmm. your thoughts really going into the next frontier and really just our top biohacks and like what we really see is like the 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 big needle movers for the next three to five years. Um, what's your experience with bioregulators? I mean, I know you're very familiar with using peptides with your uh, patient list and, and clients and stuff like that, but are you using bioregulators at all? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I've used the thyreogen obviously with a lot of people because that works with hypo or hyper. Uh, that's phenomenal. I've used the, the endolutin. I've yep. used the, I don't remember all the names, but the kidney and the prostate one with my yep. husband, he has to go this week to get his PSA rechecked to see if that went down with the bioregulator. So, no, I, I love them. I think that they are, you know, just like we talked about peptides when they first kind of exploded and you really brought peptides to the forefront of, of all of our minds and all of our knowledge. We, we said this is going to be the next medication. This yeah. is going, peptides are going to take over prescription medications. Well, sure. what, are, what are we seeing with Eli Lilly yeah. right now? It's a peptide. Terzepatide is a peptide. Manjaro is a peptide. Right. All they're, they're, they're doing is putting a sequence of amino acids in a vial and selling it for large amounts of money. So I, I believe now we have to shift over to or add in the bioregulators because they too are the next line of defense to prevent you from going on the prescription pharmaceuticals because they might actually, or they can, they have the potential to make whatever organ you're targeting work like it worked back when you were 20. So if your husband, yes, and that's awesome. I'm glad you're using them all. And they are the next frontier. And that's you and I can do another podcast if I do another podcast. Or actually, I'll just, just bring come you back on our online. show. Yeah. I'll bring you on our show or I'll bring you on, I'll come on your show and we'll talk about bioregulators because of where it's going. But um, the things that talk about bioregulators right now is that grass doesn't see them as drugs, right? So they're regulating the supplements. So there's a huge frontier. All these people are moving into it. Uh, obviously I have my own company now. I'm a minority partner I'm not, or actually, I guess I'm almost 50, 50, but I'm a partner, uh, in a bioregulator product company, as you know, Regenaburn and Regenab, which are going to blow up because the way they work, there's no barrier to entry. As you know, peptides, the injectables still have this huge barrier of entry. Yeah. As much as you and I can talk about it, there's still a lot of, especially men, because men are more pussies about it than women who will not inject themselves. They have this insane fear of needles, but yeah, so there's a lot to come with that. Um, your husband for his PSA, I'm going to give yeah. you a tip. Yeah. BPC and PB500 for a month of oh. about 20 to 30 micrograms because a lot of prostate is inflammation. So it's, when it's not a cancer, 
It's literally, as you know, BPH. And BPH comes from a lot of different things. I literally watched a fascinating video yesterday from this woman in Europe who basically has been, I mean, I'm not kidding you. She's like 96% conclusively proven that prostate cancer is caused by a root canal formation. Oh, wow. Yes, I'll send you the video. I literally yeah. watched it last night. I sent it out to so many people today. I was like, look at this shit. But I mean, I, I know you know the dental stuff is so bad yeah. for leaving in mercury. and it, It's not even just mercury, amalgam. I mean, all this shit is poison and it causes rotting and leaching and it gets into the cells and then eventually it just leads to, you know, ontological mutations, which is what causes cancer. But it's fascinating. But have them when he gets the results back and he doesn't have a, you know, an actual formation of cancer and almost 90% of men, by the way, do not have cancer. Right. They just have right. BPH. And as you know, and I'm sure you're experiencing with him, they have to wake up twice in the middle of the night to piss yeah. because it's just growing on it. And then when you lay down in a prone position, it just causes pressure, but have them do that for a month because if it is inflammation, that will literally suppress the information. Now there is a guy out there. I think it actually is a, a, a deal, uh, you know, a group of it's a man and a woman where they will go into the prostate and inject it and they get rid of the inflammation. Ben Greenfield was talking about with this guy. I know he talked about this like two or three months ago. I'll ask him who it is, but yeah. I, I know a lot about it because I've helped a lot of guys with it. So if it is an issue, come back to me and I'll refer you to some other people. You know, my other good friend, Clark Bartram, has prostate cancer right now in, in okay. California. Yep. And, um, you know, he's dealing with it. And I'm telling you, dude, the prostate cancer train and the prostate, you know, BPH train is ludicrous. There are so many urologists. You could go to 10 different urologists and get 10 different diagnoses with one, you know, form of prostate, you know, PCA or whatever. And it's like, it's a circus, like all prostate disease and cancer and BPH is a circus. Yeah. And there's not a lot of hope for men as far as like actual strategic health. So yeah. it's like up to every individual to go his own route and get it. But I, I, I definitely know a lot about it. So anyway, if it does become an issue for you, just reach out to me and I can help him. But BPC and TB 500 in a microdose for one month. Oh, I love that. I love Literally that. Literally every day. And it will, if, if, he, if he does just have a lot of inflammation down there. And again, there's a million reasons he could have inflammation in the prostate. Well, let me ask you this, because this might be good for, for your listeners as well as yeah. my male listeners. So he was on testosterone cypionate, and that pushed up his DHT. Now, the prescriber that we're working with said, it's the DHT and the CYP that is causing that elevated PSA. Let's change him to propionate. So now he's on probe and he notices that he urinates a lot less. It's almost like he can feel the swelling went down. Does that make sense to you? It a hundred percent. It So it a hundred percent does, but it's not really the DHT. It's just the form of the DHT. So basically DHT is very mistaken. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, I, I'll, I hope to talk to you off air and I know you're have a hard stop in a minute. So we're going to get off, but just uh, text me later or tomorrow. Yeah. and we'll Cause I have a lot to add to that, but there's a lot of mystery that shouldn't be with DHT, but actually that's fascinating that prop might do that because whoever we all talk about, but that's actually a, a very intelligent um, idea and thought process behind prop because of its fast acting cleave and it, it, it clears DHT a lot faster. So that's actually, that's very interesting, but it's something for you and I to talk about off air. Yeah, we'll do that. And then there's a topic for another, for a live stream for you. For sure. Okay. So you only got a couple minutes and I know you got to go. Um, what are your favorite biohacks moving into 2025 and beyond? Well, I mean, definitely if, if we can somehow continue to microdose a GLP, even if it's the, the R1, the ritatrutide, um, I think that that's, that holds tremendous biohacking advantages from the reduction of Alzheimer's to just whenever you reduce your obesity, whenever you reduce your fat mass and your body fat percent, you're going to reduce all cause mortality from type two diabetes to cancer, to heart disease, to, to Alzheimer's, to any of the neurological diseases of aging. So that, and then, yeah, I think the bioregulators definitely coming into play as, as a huge, huge biohack to improve all systems. It doesn't matter what system you are yeah. addressing. There's a bioregulator for that. There's even bioregulators. And I've tried this with my stepson who's autistic for the brain. And I yeah. think we'll see, we'll see it start to permeate into children's health and pediatrics. And I think that that's really the, the next 
big thing in our world. And bioregulars have been talked about. And like you said, you, I absolutely have to come have you come back on my show and deep dive into just that topic. But, but I don't think that they've garnered enough attention and love like peptides have. Yeah, uh, I agree 100%. All right, well, look, I know you got to go. I'm going to let you go here in a second, but uh, thank you for coming on. So guys and gals, go and support her. I mean, I actually probably do. do you, what do you have, like a million people that follow you on IG? Now you're so famous. Uh, her YouTube is Dr. Amy Horneman. Uh, her website is dramyhorneman.com, but I want to call special attention to thyroid fixer, which is her new line of supplements, which I'm taking T2 and then the powder, which is metabolism fixer. By the way, what is the brand of the formula of the, um, the flavor that you sent me of the powder? I sent you the, or I think I sent you orange and citrus. I orange mean, it sounds and like citrus. they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Orange is more like, like, uh, like tang. Yeah. Without yeah. the crap. The tang. They're, both, yeah. they're both, they both taste amazing. And like I said, like, I, because I've tried so many of them and usually I'm like, yeah, but like that was like so good. I mean, both, and my, and I remember texting my wife was like, did you taste the formula? She's like, yeah, it tastes really, really good. She's like, find out what's in it. So we're always like looking, you know, at people that have really awesome formulations on the market. Um, but I know you got to go here in one minute. So Amy, as always, I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on. So guys and gals, as always, support the amazing people that come on the Jade Campbell podcast, go to her website, follow her on IG, uh, pick up her supplement. I am going to have an affiliate code. It will be J-A-Y-C and that will give you guys a discount off these products. So all my female and really males too, but a lot of my females, you guys, if you're not following Amy, if you have any issues with your thyroid, if you have hormonal optimization issues, go to her website, dramyhorneman.com and remember, raise your vibration, optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.